Well, the piece is a wonderful tribute to Brahms's first cello sonata in E minor. And it takes materials from the first two movements. And what is so effective and unique about this is Brahms's sonata is, of course, very somber and dark. And the treatment that uh, Michael takes of these materials is really whimsical and sarcastic. So he completely transforms it. And it's quite appropriate that he chooses the title Capriccio, which be, Capriccio essentially means breaking the rules. And he breaks every rule of how you would normally perform the Brahms E minor sonata. So everything feels like a joke. And, uh, and it's just a really wonderful way to look at a piece that we know so well and have played so many times from a totally different angle. I think, I think it really is the, a kind of a standard duo arrangement where you get that sense of us going back and forth with each other, us trying to one-up the other, um, and really complementing each other. So there's no real sense of who's first cello or second cello. It's, it's really this unique, um, I don't know, race around each other. One of the things that Michael does here, he actually, uh, he doesn't need to worry about the balance because the two cellos are, are equal. So, so it gives him the ability to create unison, which Brahms, I don't think, ever does, in, uh, at least not in the first movement. But also, he still maintains this kind of relationship where we go back and forth with each other. And I think the, the overall genre of multiple cellos getting together and play to get, playing together is just so incredible because the range of the cello, the voice of the cello is so unique and broad. Um, so in a piece like this, we have the opportunity to you know, play down in the depths of our instrument, but also to highlight those really beautiful upper singing registers. And then to, to kind of challenge each other, switch back and forth and, and swerve around each other. It's, it's a lot of fun. You know, a lot of audience members who are not too familiar with, with a lot of contemporary music would say, oh, I just don't like it because they heard one piece that, you know, maybe it wasn't a great piece or maybe it just didn't speak to them. And it's totally okay to, to say, you know, I like this composer, but I don't like that composer. I mean, we, we probably say that about classical, well-known composers as well. Um, so I think the more variety that you have in the series and the more different styles, um, it allows um, the audience to discover their own vocabulary, their own preferences, and, and, and sometimes challenge themselves, but also, but also know how to relate to music better. What's so enjoy about this piece is, right, it's, it's, I don't think it's trying to reinvent the wheel. It's, it's not trying to create a new genre or anything, but I, I just think it's a lot of fun. I think it's an opportunity for two cellists to get together and have a good time. I don't think it's meant to, you know, evoke really profound imagery or anything like that, but I, I think there's also a place for pieces like that where you just get to play them and really enjoy doing it. I think pieces that combine something familiar with something new open a door to relate to a new style that, that maybe before you felt a little intimidated by, but having the familiar aspect is, is a great way to, to approach it. Great. Great.